This meeting is being recorded. Um, okay, welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission public hearing. Oh no, it's just a public meeting. Yeah. Right, yes, sorry. Uh, on Wednesday, November 9th, 2022, based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020. This meeting is still being held virtually using the Zoom platform. The best way to find instructions to join the meeting by Zoom or by phone is to, is to visit the town website, which you would have already done if you're listening right now. Um, but you can find all our information for tonight's meeting by clicking on the Historical Commission entry and the link. Um, this is the old one. My name is Jan Markward and as chair of the Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.34 p.m. We'll take a roll call of commissioners in attendance. And when you hear me call your name, Please unmute, answer in the affirmative, and remute. Becky Lockwood. I'm here. Robin Fordham. Here. Madeline Helmer. Here. Patricia Off. Present. And Hetty Startup. Here. Yeah. And I am here as well. Um, there will be opportunity for public comment during the general public comment period later in the agenda. Please be aware, anyone listening in, commissioners need not respond to comments during that period. Okay, we will now move to our agenda, which begins with announcements. Ben, do you have any announcements for tonight? Um, no, I guess I just, a uh, few updates. I, uh, we like are opening the second round of the uh, West Cemetery Headstone project uh, for bidding. So uh, I met with some contractors out there today. Uh, the bids are due in a week from today. So uh, we'll see what we come back with. Um, How many bids do you expect? Uh, I don't know. It's usually anywhere, hopefully one and up to you know three or four or something. Yeah. So you met with a number of them though. Uh, no, it was it was two gentlemen from the same company. So. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we shall see. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I think that's it for recent updates. Okay, we'll save your big announcement until three. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so should we jump straight into CPA projects? Is everybody ready to do that? Um, as we discussed last meeting, we're no longer going to do the ranking and prioritizing and recommending of the backed amounts since it's really up to CPA to do that and it, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we're just going to, I think, at least my preference, and you can all tell me differently, <laughs> that we discuss the projects just in terms of what you think are highlights that we might put in a letter of general support for all of them. Um, or, you know, for the ones that we want to support, but without any particular ranking or any recommendations on the amount we feel they should get. Um, if you want to say anything else um, about them, go ahead. But that's sort of where I think we're standing, if that makes sense to you, Ben. Yeah, that's my, that's my understanding. I think the uh, in years past, there's been such an emphasis on, you know, the historical commission ranking and prioritizing every project and uh, putting forth a funding recommendation. And uh, in my experience, that hasn't, it doesn't usually translate that well over to CPA. I mean, they'll, the CPA committee, they'll, they'll take it into consideration, but ultimately they're weighing so many other factors um, that usually what's more helpful is just kind of like the context that we provide in terms of, you know, how how important is this building or kind of what is this, you know, how crucial is this project for the preservation of the building, that that level of detail. Um, so, and I think, yeah, that, that was. And more us useful to you, Robin, as our rep, right? Um, yeah, I think there's some, um, especially uh, this year, given the incredibly high amount of asks uh, there. I mean, I would, I would, I mean, I, I can, 
I can argue on my own, whatever seems like the most urgent. I mean, the urgency is definitely uh, an issue, but yeah. Yeah, and all of them seem pretty urgent. It's yeah, not, that's true. There's not a whole lot of, we just like to do this because yeah. it's- yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, um, let's talk briefly then in order uh, how we feel about each one. We saw presentations by most of these people. Some of us went and visited each of the um, locations and um, and then talk about things that I can actually put in a letter. I will take notes on, you know, for each one, what we should say, and I'll just make a paragraph for each in one letter, if that makes sense to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, great. Well, let's start with the North Congregational Church. I think it's the biggest um, ask, but they didn't state an amount um, in their application, which is kind of unfortunate because we have talked about them doing it over a series of years. Robin? Yeah, um, I have some, uh, just looking that over, I have some feelings about that. Um, I mean, they, they had they had one uh, estimate which came in late. Um, what I'm not seeing is any sort of phasing of the project. Right. Um, I'm not and I think that um, something that I uh, discovered and I actually talked to uh, um, Sacred Places, which is a national trust um, mm -hmm. organization devoted to churches. And I had a discussion with the woman the other day and she used to work in Connecticut and Connecticut's funding for projects like this requires the use of a um, preservation architect. And I think that we're kind of missing that piece here in a lot of these larger projects. Um, so when I look at this project now, I think the recommendation should be for funds to stabilize it. And I don't know if that's just that Coon Riddle. Um, I don't know if we can, you know, come back to ask CPA for more funds. Um, I mean, just basically to stop whatever damage is happening as a result of that collapsing roof. Um, I don't think that the exterior, I mean, I, I used the building as a case study for one of my classes. I mean, I'm not particularly deeply trained in this area, but it didn't get the impression that, um, I mean, it definitely needs to be painted. <laughs> There's no doubt about that, but that part is not a priority. Um, what's a priority is that roof. And yeah, and preservation in its elemental sense, doesn't necessarily include something cosmetic like painting. I realize that painting can preserve yeah. the wood, but we're talking yeah. about deeper issues here. So when you say stabilization, you're talking about replacing the roof and the support of it, right? Or uh, I mean, about? I think I think that they don't, if they haven't had the Coon Riddle work done, then we don't know what needs to be done in order to stable, you know, to, to correct any, you know, engineering sure. issues that are, you know, that are imminent um, yeah. and then, you know, seal that roof off so that it's not leaking anymore. I don't know that they need a full roof replacement. I don't know if they should go for a slate roof. I mean, it's, this is a really, it's a very tough proposal because it's a really significant property. Um, it's only going to deteriorate further if mm -hmm. nothing is done. And yet we don't have the right kind of expert yet to advise us on, you um, yeah, I got the, the first step in. reading it that they took our enthusiastic support for the project almost as enough. And I, I felt like they didn't then try to really work in all the kinds of suggestions we had for how they needed to pursue it. Um, I mean, I think that, it, that this really just um, brings home the fact that property owners are not really in a position to understand that, you know, I, I wouldn't really um, expect them to be able to. And that's kind of where I get stuck in this, you know, CPA circle of like what you can pay for and what you can't. Yeah. So what we should really be paying for is somebody who's a preservationist architect to be on that project who can determine what needs to be done, phase it and create an appropriate ask. Yeah, the phasing is just to me a big, big issue here. Yeah, I just don't have any idea how much they want. Right. Okay. Well, um, any other comments that we can um, say, Pat? 
Well, I'm just, you know, I, I agree that the, the priority is to stabilize the building to re do whatever necessary repairs to the roof because otherwise the building is going to continue to deteriorate. But could part of the recommendation be that they get a preservation architect to advise the first phase and that the funding be applied to that and that they can apply again for the other phases? Does that make sense? You mean have CPA fund the architecture, the architects? The architect and 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 have the immediate need be considered phase one. So the immediate need is the preservation architect and the decision about what has to be done immediately. Well, the and problem that is that's not their application and we're only commenting on the application as it stands. So we can't now come in and suggest that CPA do something else that they haven't proposed. Well, we're suggesting, I, I think we've, made suggestions in the past that things be phased in. And, and you're right, they didn't listen to that part of our recommendations. But if this comes back as a recommendation that it's, it's a worthy ask, but it has to be done differently. Yeah, Robin? Um, I think that it's, it, it, maybe Ben can weigh in on this. Um, it, it's this really confusing gray area um, I mean, I know that we've had project a project, I think it was, was it Kendrick Park? I can't remember. We got some town project that was off the grant cycle. We've received applications that were incomplete before and discussed them before the committee. So I don't want, I don't know, I don't know how we provide a recommendation, you know, I sort of feel like if, you know, I was working for another organization, I'd ask for, you know, a revision of the application, but, mm -hmm. but the issue is that like we need, somebody needs to help people understand what they need to do. And it's not of us. You know? I, no, mean, I mean, we did try. I know, yeah. but I'm, but I'm saying it, I guess what I'm saying is that that's the piece that I see that is really missing in CPA and I don't know how other towns do it. You know, I don't know how other people fit this really important piece in, which is, you know, you need the expert to create the project in order to have an ask. You just you can't expect that of property owners. So I don't wanna, you know, not recommend this project. I sort of wanna bring it, I guess I wanna bring it to CPA and, you know, ask the town you know, what, what do we do? Do we give them more time to locate a preservation architect? Do we contact someone for them? Um, do we contact, um, you know, like technical support um, at PDPC? I know there are technical support hours to figure out what this piece is. Cause I don't think it's just this project. I think it's all of them, yeah. you know, it's Salem Place and it was the women's club, anything that's large like this, um, really needs that that piece. And I'd like to, instead of answering it for this project, I'd like to say we need this answer for all projects going forward. So mm -hmm. let's have, you know, the town work with us to figure out um, um, the solution and then. Well, um, what about if in the letter that comes from us, I just say, we think this is a really worthy project that, that absolutely needs attention right now to keep it from deteriorating further but we realize the application still needs some work and and it's hard to know how and what to fund at this point and then you can take it from there in the meeting okay right? i mean i would suggest language that that talks about you know just brief but talks about phasing and yeah um, and you know emergency stabilization yeah i also don't see why pat's suggestion can't they can at least consider using some of the CPA funds to hire a preservation architect. Um, even if it's not in their application, I think there's still some. Really? You think CPA could come back and say, we're not going to give you what you asked for, we'll give you this? No, I think if it's if it's a matter of like funding the, like supporting, if the roof is really like the primary focus, like supporting the roof and replacing the roof, I don't see why CPA can't say, you know, we want you to do this project, but we also think you need an architect need to know, to more. Yeah. know more about yeah. how it would be built and structured. Um, I mean, there's applications change from the time they're submitted to when they're funded in my experience. Oh yeah, uh, okay, great. 
Okay, well, I think I can work with that. And then um, Robin, you, you can take it from there in a way. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's just really... kind of, you know, a general framework from the commission. Right, you know? right. But yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I, I think I'm just concerned about the applicant, you know, just the, the, the challenge to the applicant of being able to manage this project without yeah. someone like yeah, that. Particularly I don't, because we have a language issue here. There's, it's tough. It's, it's extra yep. tough for them compared yep. to some of the other groups. Absolutely. Absolutely. They don't, there isn't anybody that specifically supports some of those concerns either. Right, know? right. Well, I think it's also just that the nature of the knowledge that you need to have to preserve a roof with, on a historic structure is not the same as how to grow a congregation or offer pastoral support to the, you know, people who come to your community church. You know, I just think they're really, yeah. they're really or, going in, in different directions. Um, right. Or even just to replace a roof. I mean, it doesn't look like this project is just to replace the roof. That would be pretty straightforward. Right, but yeah, there's, yeah. you know, we don't know what's going on. So unless you happen to have somebody in your congregation who's a specialist, and yeah. it may be that it's not a sorry, it no. may be it's not a preservation architect you need, but a structural engineer who well, has archi preservation architectural training. You know, I mean, yeah. Sutton Gumpets and Hager come to mind, you know, because they have decades of experience in doing. Well, they submitted the Coon Riddle um, estimate, and I just don't know. Um, I mean, I actually did send an email to, I talked to Bruce Coldham, who's listed on the project team. Um, I talked to, or I, I emailed with Chris Farley, I think is his name at Coon Riddle, but nobody's really at the center of it. You know, they're like, Bruce was like, well, you know, I, I gave them this advice and they didn't seem to quite take it. And Chris was sort of like, well, you should talk to the church. And I just keep, I'm frustrated because I'm sitting here going, you know, they need this other person. <laughs> you know, I don't know who it is, but, um, you know, I, maybe it could be, maybe it could be a Kun Riddle thing. It, it just seems like there's another com conversation that needs to happen. And I, I just don't know how to do it within this framework. Yeah, I, you know, I'm looking at the documents again. I didn't see anything that specifically related to the major emergency. Uh, the Coon Riddle was, uh, that was a, um, wasn't that a review of everything, like looking at the bell tower and the structure there? And that's where all the damage is. It's on that front end. And it, and it could, could be that they thought Coon Riddle was taking the role of a structural engineer or an architectural engineer because they're architects. And, and it sounds from what you said, Robin, that they're really not at the core of it. They just did some cursory evaluation. I think, yeah, that, that they're, well, not, they're, yeah, they're not there yet. <laughs> but their fee is not about the work. It's about their fee for doing the study. Right. right. We don't have anything that actually lays out what the emergency is exactly right because they had, don't have any money to pay for the study i think i mean it right. may be that they're coming you know for money for that but i wouldn't want to just fund the study and then not fund anything that's going to tighten up that roof so it doesn't keep leaking right it's just that's why the proposal is so right amorphous yep. it doesn't address the the elephant in the room right Okay, I'll work with that. Uh, the South Congregational Church. Comments. Uh, oh, I mean, the, the one comment I can throw in about the South Congregational Church is that in my um, opportunity to ask questions, I put in both churches, you know, whether or not they've communicated with each other, because it seems like there's a tremendous amount of expertise uh -huh. going on at the South Congregational Church. Um, you know, it would be really nice if you know, some of our, our great preservation-minded Amherst residents could, you know, join forces. I mean, it's yeah. practically the same church. <laughs> they probably see themselves as in competition at this moment, uh, you know. But, but they have identified the problem at South Church. Yes. yes. With, with oh, the yeah, beam. it's a much clearer application. Right. You were um, I just think, and a couple of these missed this, that we're looking at if anything's approved, it's going to happen, I don't know, nine months from now, eight months from now that they get paid. Yeah. And the only one that built in for inflation was the cemetery. And I think that's a really smart thing. 
Um, so I would suggest that as well. Mm -hmm. And can I thank you for bringing that up, Becky. I just want to jump back to the North Church because that was one of my questions. And I think I put it in as a question to the town, whether given the state of the roof, whether we can, we, I know we have reserve funds, whether we can fund something off site though. Like that's what I would like to see happen. I don't want to see that wait till July. That's crazy. I mean, if you've looked at, you know, the way things are falling apart. Are you talking about funding what, the study or? No, the study and I mean, I guess I would just consider it, you know, tightening the roof, you know, addressing, funding the study and, and then addressing any, any, you know, construction that needs to take place to keep it from, you know, right. continuing to fail, <laughs> you know, I mean, whether it's collapsing or just water getting in, continuing to degrade things, just to, to tighten the roof. And, and which funds are you referring to? That so be? what I'm referring to is that every year in CPA, we have the opportunity to reserve funds. And I can't remember how much it was reserved. Oh, this is from last, last year, you mean? So that we have this money on hand. And that would be um, that would be my, my question is whether, I'm not even talking about like, and I'm not, you know, I don't know, but like, I, I mean, I only know from, you know, hearing people talk about, you know, mothballing buildings, which is basically mm -hmm. you just do everything that you can to keep it from getting worse and you stop. Like that's kind of what I'd like to see happen here. And I'd like to see it happen before, I'd like work to start before July 1st because of the state the building is in. And I think that's the purpose of, you know, reserving those funds. This, but I don't know, that's a, that's a question for Ben and for Sonia, I guess, but. Yeah. This is what in historical studies we call conservation versus preservation. And conservation is just what <coughs> it is, and preservation is to go. Right, 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 so. yeah. Yeah, this would be preservation versus rehabilitation. <laughs> so we'd be preserving it, or maybe, or yeah. Conser conserving it. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, how is that addressed, Ben? Is that something that is that happens in the same CPA meeting? Or is this something that the town has those monies and it's not through the CPA committee? Um, that it would be through the CPA committee, uh, but then it's still the town council that needs to authorize it as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, I guess you could bring it up at the CPA committee meeting while you guys are talking about it. Yeah. Um, okay. You're talking about North Amherst Church, right? Yeah, she went back yeah. to North. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm done with North. Thank you, Becky. Mm -hmm. okay. Can we go back to South now, everyone? <laughs> so we see it as a stronger, clearer application. Um, do we have any comments to make for my letter? I think I made, I think I wrote a letter to the church because I, this is my denomination. I am a member of the UCC. The South, um, that's not the that South. church, but I'm a member of the, congreg of the congregation. I don't know whether that means I shouldn't be talking at this point in the meeting. Um, but so I they asked me, you know, as an MS resident, as I don't think they knew I was on the historical commission, if I would write a letter. So I did. Um, okay. And I, on the question of whether they're sort of in competition, um, can we can we talk about that a little bit? I mean, that seems crazy. You know, this is the north and the south of our town. You know, these are the two spires that kind of mark the, you know, the. It, it's just sort of so symbolic in some ways. Well, I don't, I don't know for a fact that they yeah. think that. I'm just yeah. saying that if no, you, I, I just imagine if you have people in your congregation or friends yeah. of your, yeah, your movers and shakers who are able to help you, you probably think, well, we don't want to help any other application because we want ours to be strong enough. But I may be making this up. That may be my own. Oh, no, I understand you know. that, yeah, and Jan. I think I think um I I can see it, I can envision a situation where the minister and the and the the committee at South Church could very graciously talk to the North Church congregation and say, mm -hmm. you know. Is there, an, is there a conversation we can have or mutual site visits? But you do, know. do the two churches even know they're both applying for this? I don't think, I don't know. They do. I, I'm going to okay. call yeah. the, the minister 
Ben, um, how do they I, know? If I can, if I'm allowed to. I, <laughs> I did put, I mean, the questions, so CPA members are given the proposals and then asked to submit questions to the proposers. Mm -hmm. um, so all the proposers saw my questions um, about, about this connection. Okay. And the other thing that, you know, I would um, just put out there is the possibility that the, um, you know, that stabilizing the North Church might not be a huge ask, you know, stabilizing mm -hmm. might not be that much money. Right. Um, so might not be in, in, in conflict at all. Okay. It's, it's hard to tell for me um, from the proposal because I don't see anything about the current um, structural issues or what you're discussing. It's not here. So which, which proposal? The North uh, the North Church. We're back at the North Church. Okay. okay. Um, well, that's the problem is that their proposal is very vague. Okay. But now we're on the South Church. <laughs> what about that proposal? Well, I think that's specific. And it's probably something that we would support because to quote Hetty, the, that's the spire in the south of Amherst and the North Church is the spire. This, it's history. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's the monument to history um, in the settlement in what were uh, separate communities at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I think they're both worthy of supporting. It's just a question that the South Church seems to have their information such that we can support it. And the North Church needs a, another piece in there to, to, to tell us what that conservation looks like in, in phase one. Right. Um, so just make a general statement that we're in support of the work proposed by the South Church and that it's a historic streetscape in the South and- It's on the common. Right, it is on the common, mm -hmm. yeah. which is a historic district, mm -hmm. et cetera, yeah. Okay. I was just going to say, too, I was surprised when they came to the top of the commission over the summer. I remember pretty clearly that their number was closer to 150,000. Mm -hmm. um, and it has ballooned up to 260 now. So, um, well, well but, you know, it may also saying, be that they were working with old numbers, and we know that all these costs have skyrocketed lately. Yeah, they're, they're the estimate, estimate of it's based off of this from. The end of September, so much more recent. So mm -hmm. yeah, they're probably working with older numbers. Yeah. yeah. Now, is there a proposal phased? Um, no, because it's like one. Is if I remember correctly, it's one project where they go in, they take things down, they rebuild and put them back up. It's not really something that can be done in pieces. I don't think. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like a. It's a one of. It's one piece of, of work. It would be, yeah, it would be basically taking the steeple down and then rebuilding it on the ground and then putting it back up. Putting it back up, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the Wildwood Cemetery Dickinson House. A couple of us went there and saw it. Did anybody else go? It's, you can't I, I, see it from the street. You have to. Drive. I was there recently. Um, it's a it's a farmhouse, isn't it? Isn't yeah. That? Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like they've they've been doing a lot of work um, behind the farmhouse. They've built a a new um, sort of maintenance. Yes, building. and they did it low so it wouldn't take yeah. away from the look. Yeah, yeah did a nice. It, it's job. very very nice. I I I really. Um, commend them for what they've done already to sort of take care of what is, a, again, a very, very, very important um, place in town. Mm -hmm. So I'm all in favor. It's pretty clear when you look at the building, you can see the deterioration that's been caused by the water uh, on the brick facade of brick walls on the chimneys which are in really bad shape and it's clear that the roof is is not doing its job. Becky did you have? Oh I just wanted to say I'm in support of it. I think that the proposal was really clear um, and, and I appreciated that. It was well you know well worded well thought out. I love that they've chosen 
uh, and I think I said this when they when they appeared that they've chosen something historic to replace uh, the roof. And well, it's, it looks historic. It looks historic. Yes, yeah. I don't mean historic. Yeah. yeah. And I, but I do think in terms of clarity and numbers and everything else, they've done a, a good job. Okay, Robin. Um, yeah, I thought they did a good job. Um, this project reminds me um, to ask Ben um, what the what the status. So um, CPA dollars are tied to compliance with the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, and one of the standards is um, uh, I'll just I'll just uh, summarize it. It's basically like if you if you can if you you can reuse it, you reuse it. You don't replace old material with new material unless it has to be replaced with new material. And mm -hmm. I noticed that two of the um, chimneys, they said they were going to take them all the way down and build them back new. Oh. The discussion of reusing any of you know, any um, historic bricks. And so, again, this really gets back to the fact that you know the CPA law was created with these requirements and then kind of no structure for enforcement of them. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's a, a question that I'll continue to ask the town. Um, my understanding from working with um, uh, Shannon Walsh is that she's providing um, uh, CPA, uh, Secretary of the, the Interior Standards Review for some towns. Um, that the, the towns are, you know, starting to, to, to work this into their um, mm -hmm. you know, into, into the kind of the, the progression of the project. And so um, it's not for me to sit at the CPA meeting and say this doesn't comply, but mm -hmm. it is for me to suggest that it might not comply. I think I put that in my questions. And Robin, like, I can tell you what an answer might be from them if you brought this up. Um, this, these are 19th century chimneys. I have a ch had a chimney from 1969 that the bricks were so powdered that you could put your finger right through them. And I had holes throughout my chimney. Mm -hmm. The bricks have to be replaced after a certain number of years. They just don't hold up in weather and with the heat inside and cold outside, they break down. So I can't imagine any of those bricks and those chimneys would be worthy of chimney. You might be able to use it in some sort of decorative fashion, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't function. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I mean, I think the larger question still stands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, but in terms of those chimneys specifically, I think that would be your answer. You just can't reuse those bricks for that. Um, okay. So I'll just basically say we're in support of the project. The proposal seems strong and um, the work seems necessary. And just the same general thing we're going to say about the South Church, right? Although it's not about streetscape and, and that sort of thing, because uh, you can't see it, but it is in a historic cemetery and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, okay. Um, the next one is our proposal for a consultant for preservation restrictions. Uh, we've all talked about this. We're all good. All I can say in the letter is it's our proposal and we like it. I mean, what what can I do? Right? It's all there. So. Um, and the other one that's ours is Robin's yours, which is also really coming from us. And obviously we support that. And, and I mean, all I can do is underline how outbuildings have been ignored and we feel it's time to address them, right? Yep. And the final one is the Mabel Lud Loomis Todd. Um, okay, this one I was, we talked about, I don't remember how it came up, Ben, but my writing a letter in support of the Historical Society's proposal. And I don't remember if that was in my role as chair of Historical Commission or as an art historian. Mm -hmm. um, but I talked to Gigi today and got more information about them. And I can okay. go see them if I want to. And my assessment of them is that they are not great paintings, but they represent a really important moment in Amherst history in um, American women trying to be artists without any resources, 
in paintings that represent horticultural examples of the area that correspond to Emily Dickinson's poetry about the nature in the area, and they were friends, and Mabel Lewis Todd, of course, was her editor. Mm -hmm. um, Mabel Lewis Todd studied briefly with He Johnson, who's a really important landscape painter, and traveled widely as she did, gathering information and, and images. I mean, there's you know, she was the wife of an Amherst College professor of astronomy. She started the Historical Society. She was one of the founders. She did a lot of civic stuff for the town. And they have other artifacts of hers. So these are part of her oeuvre that the Historical Society holds. And they can't do this exhibition of the paintings unless they're preserved. But I'm wondering, should I just put a paragraph in our general letter or should I go ahead and write that letter for them to attach to their application, does that is that any conflict of interest for us, Robin, um, to see that when you bring it before the committee? To see that, so you're writing a letter in support of their uh, of having the restoration done. Um, what would the conflict of interest be? Well, that mm, I'm not doing that for any of the other. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You know um, what I mean? A separate letter? I mean, I'm doing it, I can't do it as an art historian and not admit that I'm chair of historical commission, right? I mean, that's yeah, but I, I mean, uh, I, I mean, conflict of interest is that, are we, are we stretching that too far? I mean, you, you, you don't gain no. anything. No, of course not. No, I'm just no, wondering if it shows us favoring in any way by my writing that letter. I don't think so because I think you're writing it from a different, you know, from your professional standpoint. I think we also have to be quite careful not to judge the paintings formally, um, as an as a one of your fellow art historians on the commission. Um, I don't think that's. I don't think we should even go there, Jan. I think we should talk about them in terms of their historical importance. Oh, I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying we recognize these are not great masterpieces because they're going to look at them and say, these are pretty amateur flower paintings if they know anything, you know, and I mean, I don't think we should pretend. Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I think it's. You know, a, I think, they, I think that that said, they're still important for these reasons. You know yeah. I mean? I mean, it's actually a really, it's, it's one of the most important distinctions around these projects you know, is that, you know, we often support projects that people don't, you know, aren't particularly moved by visually, you know, or, or mm -hmm. that's not one of the requirements. So I think it's mm -hmm. perfectly fine okay. to say that. I mean, I don't know if Ben and Nate want to weigh in on whether you should have the two, you know, have the letter as well as, you know. So yeah, yeah, I was just going to suggest it might just be easier um, and and more, and also easier for the CPA committee because they'll be reading tons of letters to maybe just incorporate it all into one letter. And I just have it. a lot more to say about them professionally than I do about these other. Well, I think it's one of the more. It's it's also one of the more unique projects because all the other ones are like you know fairly straightforward building project or survey consultant kind of stuff, and this one is you know it's it's the uh, historical commission's role to kind of put them in context, I guess. Um, but I think, yeah, I think it'd go either way, but. Um, Nate, do you have any thoughts on this? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. He disappeared. <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. There you are. I would say that the paintings are really ugly <laughs> and that uh, they are one of the town. No, hi everyone. I'm Nate, a planner with the town. I'll be taking over for Ben. I was listening for a little bit. The um, so you know, at first I think this, you know, the commission could vote to send a letter through the chair. Um, and in years past, the historical commission, you know, has written a letter with rank order. And right. you know, the yeah. the housing trust had done that too, and we've kind of stayed away from that the last few years, just because the commission, like the trust, also submits CPA proposals, and sometimes it seems odd that we'd be kind of formally prioritizing things. I think in general, the letter can state, you know, preferences or recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it would be good from the committee, you know, you know, can we say the commission voted, you know, and authorize the chair, you know, it's through the chair, but it's the commission who's writing it um, okay. per se. In terms of the paintings, I think it's fine to say that they're not um, masterpieces in terms of 
their quality, but their importance to the history of Amherst. And I think that's a good acknowledgement just because the CPA committee, you know, they might ask those questions, right? They ask really detailed questions for the um, housing proposal. So they're meeting tomorrow night and some of their follow-up questions, you know, they had their initial questions and then they've had follow-up questions and they're getting down to some pretty detailed points. And I could see where they might ask follow-up questions of the historical society and say, well, what's, what's significant about these paintings and, and why these and not other parts of a collection. And so I think, you know, referencing that, you know, the ties to Amherst, but that, yeah, that, you know, <clears throat> taken out of context, it may not be um, right. as important as a CPA project taken within the context of the society and Amherst. And so. And it felt like the proposal only really focused on them being part of an exhibition upcoming and they had to be fixed for that. And there's more to it than that to me. Right. Um, yeah. Nate or Jan, I think Jan was asking if she could submit a, le a detailed letter in support of the application and then also submit oh. a brief recommendation in this letter with all the other recommendations because she oh, I guess I, mis oh, I guess I misunderstood that. Um, so Am two I right, separate. Jan? Yeah. Um, I mean, yes, I, guess. I mean, you'd have to be clear that, you know, your personal letter is Jan. No, I would do it from the commission, I think, just also saying I'm an art historian on the oh. commission. All right. But then I think in the general letter, when I get to that item, I could just say um, a, a separate letter has been submitted with, you know, in support of it right. from us. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't need to say anything else in that maybe, right. right? Or you could summarize it, Jen, with the little summary you just gave a few minutes ago about the importance of, of well, that's basically what the letter it, says. <laughs> I know, but you can you can summarize it like in five sentences as opposed to however many you're going to use in, in the letter. Six. And I mean <laughs> their, their their request their request isn't for too much money. Um no, it's not a big, yeah, you know, project. But it, yeah, so. But but it needs to be in context, right. and Jan was very eloquent about the context. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have. Uh, I just have a question for the commission when we're done discussing. Uh, well, I think that covers the projects. Anybody have anything else to say on any of them before we move on? Sorry, uh, no, really my, that's, that's what my desk. I'm sorry. That's what my question relates to. So um, when I get there, it's my responsibility to, um, you know, argue on behalf of all these projects, and um, so we're in support of all of them. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, I always get a little bit confused when I mean we the uh, when I tallied up the numbers for the asks this year, I was kind of um, gobsmacked. <laughs> it's a huge <laughs> amount of money. And, um, you know, I suspect that something uh, will have to be cut. And so then the question comes to me as a member of the CPA committee, um, am I voting for the project, knowing that all my other CPA committee members are going to vote against it and it's going to get, you know, taken off the off the slate or am I, you know, am I using my judgment to say we just can't, you know, we're in support of this, but we can't fund it. Like that's where I get a little bit confused on my my yes, no. It's been um, mm -hmm. pretty. Well, if we send you with our, you know, to represent the fact that we think all of them are worthy, then I guess all you could say is give them less, but support it. I mean, you can't in a way, you can't propose to cut any of them if you're representing mm. our belief that they're all very, very worthy at this point. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, there's $8 million in asks with all yeah. the proposals, and there's, you know, one point, I don't know, one, two, three, I don't know, but a fraction of what's requested. And so, <clears throat> you know, for the housing trust, we said maybe it might come back to them if the CPA committee really needs to know Um what is the yeah. highest priority? So it may, you know, maybe Robin, you could say that if the CPA committee is really struggling, you know, you could ask like, would they actually make a referral or, you know, ask the commission to weigh in again? Um, Cause I, I, do, I do think so. I think things have to be cut. You know, typically the CPA committee tries to fund every proposal, whether that be through bonding or partial funding. But I think right, this year right. it's yeah. just uh, impossible. Yeah. And that's what I'm, I mean, that's what I'm anticipating. And then I'm, you know, that I'm going to, 
you know, what, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a representative, but I'm also a member of the CPA body, you know, I'm yeah. supposed to be helping pick what we can fund. I mean, so it's not a contradiction to say we're in support of this project, but, you know, I mean, any foundation, you know, has to pick from their applications mm -hmm. and some of yeah. the ones that they like or so. That's yeah, I mean, I think, I think it'd be important to, to say that all, you know, the commission finds all the projects eligible. Yes, eligible um, and worthy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, because the CPA committee, I feel like in some of their questions, they were asking a little bit, you know, kind of asking that indirectly, um, you know, and maybe some don't make it, I, you know, um, even for housing, there's been too many recreation as a huge ask. Yep. Uh, it's just, I, I, you know, I think people are trying to take advantage of, you know, it is mm -hmm. a large CPA uh, funding yeah. every year, there's a large amount, but it's, um, yeah. Okay. And also, too, I'm, I'm thinking back to last year, like, there's a way to prioritize, like, like, phase one, like, phases of a project. Like, I remember having conversations um, with uh, Jane was weighing in about, like, oh, like, the women's club, like, let's make sure that everything that they need scaffolding or a lift for, like, it's important right. to do right. those things together. Right. Um, and maybe like the uh, the subsequent work and wait till the following year, so that right. that kind of cut cut their project budget quite a bit. But there's actually well, we tried to do with the North Church, right? Yeah. I mean, we're just we're just you know in that case we that's just a matter. I think it's just a matter of missing expertise. But um, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to be clear with everybody that you know if I vote no against something, it's not a vote yeah. against yeah. the historical <laughs> commission's recommendation. It's you know being part of this this other body. And interestingly enough, the smallest ones where they might say, well, let's just give them all the small ones and a little bit on the big ones. All the small ones are, well, at least the two that we did are kinds of things that aren't emergency. Right. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so the emergencies are the big ticket items. Right. I mean, if we had a, you know, 15 or $20,000, I mean, here's, you know, here's a theoretical, if the, if the North Amherst Church was 15 or $20,000 for stabilization, you know, would we say, I mean, I would say that, you know, that's really the most at risk property right now. And for that level of funding, if it meant kicking out one of our proposals, which one would it be? <laughs> you know, like, that's what I'm asking the committee now, which one would it be? You know, that's why, you know, you don't want to obsess over ranking, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm going to be arguing on behalf of something, you mean which of the two that we propose? The consultant. Yeah, right. I mean, which of those spot? Yeah, or what? Yeah, right. Would it be the painting? And neither of them are critical in terms of preservation. Right. You know, right. in the I don't know what. What I don't know what the committee thinks about. Um, it seems like preservation uh, restrictions would be more important than outbuildings this year. Would that be correct. Mm. There's Maybe. a chance the uh, we were talking with. Uh, Internally, there's a chance the preservation restrictions and stuff could be funded uh, through the administrative funds, perhaps. Um, and that's a completely separate amount. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. So I think hopefully Sonia might have an update on that. Hopefully. Well, we talked about maybe the outbuilding program could be done through administrative funds too. Yeah. I think that might be more of a stretch, but maybe. Yeah. Well, but if she had to, she could argue that. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess, we'll talk her into it. <laughs> I guess I'm I'm I mean I'm asking for some feedback here, you know, it is you know and we're we just keep coming back to saying you can handle this. Go well, I would handle it. I mean I'll tell you that I would I would I would if I you had to ask me right now, I'd say uh you know stabilize the North Church and uh skip the outbuildings till next year and um you know do uh preservation restrictions because I know there's a backlog there. I mean, but that do would... them out of that other fund. I mean, always push that. Well, I mean, if you could do money. that. Yes, yeah. right. But that's, you know, I, I'm leaving all of that. I've made that argument a thousand times and I'm leaving it up to town, the town. They yeah, can tell me yeah. if they're going to do it or not. I'm not making that argument anymore. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, at one point, Ben and I had mentioned, and I think the commission talked about having a policy on preservation restrictions. So at some point, you know, <clears throat> there would be a local restriction and then, at, you know, there'd be a threshold amount or... Yep. Uh, after which it would be a right. permanent restriction. And I do think that's something we could get back to because um, 
you know, the restriction through Mass Historic takes a long time and they require a lot. And a local one, we still could require certain things, but it wouldn't have to be um, to the extent that Mass Historic does. I mean, they really do spend time just kind of looking over grammar on the restriction itself, and that can take six months. Yeah. Um, you know, pagination, they don't like if you don't use, you know, a certain font for the footnotes. I mean, it's things that just really delay a process. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they do require, uh, in terms of the drawings, description, and images, and other things, I mean, it, it's more than staff would have time to do, uh, right. to take measured drawings and do scale drawings and certain things. So it's just, you know, the funding requested for that is really to help kind of not just you know, the restriction, we have a template now, it's really just kind of all the other pieces to it. Yep. Um, yeah, I, you know, Rob, I do, I hear your question. I think it's something that, you know, even staff has, you know, staff has been asked a little bit to talk about the projects. And, um, you know, it's interesting, even if we don't recommend something, it's not as if it may not be eligible. And so, you know, I, we're really trying to help the CPA committee. I know Dave Zomack has talked about really helping them think about, yeah, what could be a priority this year? Do things come back? Um, mm -hmm. You know, and even if it's, you know, not recommending it doesn't mean it's not eligible. So they've never really been in this position where they've had to probably make uh, some harder decisions. Yeah. Yeah, you this know, is the worst year I've seen. Right yeah. yeah as well. Okay, well, I will put together a letter from us about all the projects and I will finalize the project letter support, whatever, for the paintings. Um, and so we're ready to move on to the next agenda item. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, that sounds like everybody's comfortable with me making my decisions at CPA. I think we gave you some yeah. guidance. Mm -hmm. Becky? Oh, Becky. I just wanted to ask you, Jan, I would love to see the letter when it's final. Okay. Um, if, if you I don't mind sharing, I, I would love to see it. You want to see it before I send it? Should we no. give you preliminary? No. No, yes, that's I mean, I'm happy to do that. I just, I don't know what the deadline is here. No, no, no. I don't want to slow it up. I just, for me, after all this that we've gone through and studied, I'd like to see. Sure, the part. of course. If, yeah, just if you could share it with all of us, Jan, that would be yeah, great. Yeah, I'll send it to Nate and he can send Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think that, I mean, the CPA committee meets next, it's next Thursday, right? To, yeah, to it's coming up. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they meet. I think they're meeting every week. I'll, yeah. I'll try and get to it tomorrow. I'll add it to the file. Um, okay, so the next thing is our staff transition. Oh, Hold on. Kevin. I'm sorry. Um, ben, Jan, who's presenting on the um, Barnes and Outbuilding to CPA? That was the oh, because you can't. Right. Oh, oh well, that's right. Oh, because... well, that's that comes under staff transition in a way. We were going to bring it up, but let's do it now. Yeah. Um, I can't be sure that I can be there. So I was going to ask Madeline if she would be willing to go and present that with your expertise. It's just because it's Robin's proposal and since she's our rep, she can't she can't represent us, represent it. Um yeah, for next Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yes, I could do that. I um sure. It sounds good. Yeah, yeah. if you want to have a chat about my thinking. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, do you have my number, Madeline? I think we, yeah, we met. So yes. And, uh, okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That would, I really appreciate it. Thanks. I've got sure. um, all sorts Thank of you. possible conflicts and I didn't want to commit knowing that it, at the last second I might have to back out. So, okay. Um, staff transition. Mm -hmm. Take it away, Ben. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, oh, well, yeah, you probably all saw my email and now that made to here. We alluded to it, but yeah, I just wanted to say formally, um, I've accepted a job elsewhere. Um, I'm gonna Without be asking us. <laughs> yeah, you guys did not make a motion and vote on it, but I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm going to be working in Northampton for the uh, State Department of Transportation in their regional office out here. Um, it's a little bit closer to home where I live now um, and gives me the opportunity to work kind of on a regional scale, which I'll appreciate. But um, yeah, it's just been, it's been really nice working with everybody. Um, and we've worked on some really good projects together and passed the bylaw, which I'm proud of, and the writer's walk completed. So it's been a really satisfying job and nice to work with you all. So thank you. Um, 
And uh, Nate, who some of you know from two and a half years ago from when I started this job, we, we kind of, uh, Nate, I shadowed Nate for a while while he worked with the Historical Commission. Uh, I'm now going to give responsibilities back to Nate for, for this committee uh, until someone is hired and maybe Nate will give it up. I don't know. But uh, Poor Nate so. keeps getting stuck with us. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, well, yeah, we're gonna miss you, Ben. You've been yeah. great, and um, we take a certain amount of pride in feeling like we got you trained to be the perfect historical commission rep, and now here you are. Yeah, <laughs> abandoning us. Really for yeah. So we're gonna miss you, but believe me, yes. you're gonna miss us more. Yeah. <laughs> my words. Yeah, we already um, told him he, his co his new coworkers won't be as nice as the folks in town hall. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Boy, and yeah. if you have any committees you have to work with, brace yourself because we're you know we're sweethearts compared to most. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but we, we definitely thank you, Ben, for your, yes. your role. Oh, yes. Yes. Really. Yes. Appreciate you did great. Yeah. You've been great. Other than Nate, you've been one of the best. <laughs> yeah, one of the best. <laughs> I've had a lot of them come through. So. Totally, totally, yeah. yeah, you've been on there a while, Jan. The um, I, uh, yeah, so it's it's great. I you know I've worked with Ben uh, for a bit, and we've met with uh, Shannon and PVPC for the preservation plan, and uh, Ben's helping me get up to speed on some of the projects. So great. Yeah, it, it's great. I think the commission's moved a lot forward in the last two to three years, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I will be taking over for Ben. Um, I still have some other responsibilities, so I'll be stretched a little bit. I think, you know, we did advertise for Ben's position, the town has, and we're hoping to have you know, someone hired relatively soon. It doesn't mean that they'll be able to jump right in. So um, it could be that, you know, two staff attend the commission meetings for a number of months, and then we could make another transition. Um, okay. So we'll see. I mean, we have, a, you know, it also depends on I don't know if another staff person, we have Maureen Pollock's a planner with the town. I don't think we'll shuffle duties around, but you know, there's been some talk about what committees might be um, aligned with other you know, work and how do you do that. Um, but you know, Ben staffed uh, the local historic district commission and then CDBG, and they're not related, but you know, it gives a planner a breadth of experience in different yeah. projects. So I do think the historical commission, local historic district pair nicely. Yes. Um, it's just yeah. a matter of what else you know, could, could there be. Well, yeah, I just probably told you I'll only be with you one month, Nate, because I announced that I am going off at the end of the year. So everybody, you'll all be working with Nate. Yeah. But he's great. I've worked with him in yeah. He's fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, one thing, major thing we have to decide then is we have named by name um, Ben as our designee for the bylaw. Um, oh. on who decides the historic, who decides present, I can't remember what it's called. God, we worked on that, what, five, six years? Yeah. That something is not preferably preserved, is well, historically we, significant. Yeah, it's significant. whether it's significant. Yeah. And we, we named him, we didn't say the staff member from the town. So we need to decide now, are we going to designate Nate? or call it the staff member or one of us? It could be, I mean, it could be both, right? A member and no, staff. No, but... can't be two. Then it becomes, we, we've been through this, then it becomes, um, it, it, it's an issue of open meeting. It becomes, Remember, ben, a sub, it becomes a subcommittee, yeah. A subcommittee, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm saying, it, it can, couldn't it be staff and a commission member that, that those make up the two or no? No, uh, we were advised, I think it was Sharon or uh, Joel Bard who said that um, those are the two town's attorneys advised that that would technically be a subcommittee um, if, they're, if, they're, if they're authorized to, to oh, make yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or it, 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 it caught us by surprise too, at kind of at the 11th hour when we were trying to pass the bylaw. So the way we've done this is like, it's, it's. It was know, Ben in consultation with yeah, me. Yeah, per person <laughs> X is authorized to make the decision in consultation with the chair. Y or something like that, yeah. Which is the same thing as <laughs> those two people, but it doesn't look legally like a subcommittee. Right. It's like who is the person who's actually authorized to press the button, whether it's significant or not, but they mm -hmm. are encouraged to consult with. 
So he sends me the proposal and we, you know, he tells me what he thinks. And then by email, I say yes or no, and it goes from there. And if we're in any doubt, we bring it to a public right. meeting. Right, yeah, and there's multiple provisions for, you know, if the, if the designee is not, you know, the designee may opt to, you know, send it to the commission to make the distinction or designation. Um, so if it, if it, yeah, they can, they have that option as well. Mm -hmm. Or if we disagree, it has yeah. to. Mm -hmm. yeah. So does anybody have any thoughts on that? How we should do this this time? No. If we designate, if we designate <laughs> Nate, if we designate, <laughs> we'll have to. Um, we'll have to then put the next person in as well. If, That's right. But we talked I, about naming Ben because at the time we we trusted Ben, right? And there are <laughs> points where no, I'm, I'm, you know, there could be we get assigned somebody yep. that we're not that sure we totally want them to make this decision, and so we wouldn't want to have them. So. Well, how cumbersome is it to change the name? I think it's just we vote in a meeting like this, oh. right? We don't, there's nothing written that has to be, you know, go through some sort of town council. No, yeah, the bylaw says in the commission or their designee. And so I think it just becomes a, you know, an email that uh, Ben would send around or I would send around that would, you know, go to the building commissioner or planning director and it becomes uh, kind of a record that way, but it's not anything formal you know, in terms of a change through town council or anything. Mm -hmm. Well, could we designate Nate until we know whether we need to change that? What do you mean? How well, we if there's if there's a new staff member and, and eventually they take over this position, then we would have to make a decision about that um, and whether Nate we continue to assume that or not, but in the in, in your role with us right now, Nate, you you were moving into Ben's role, and right. we we know you and trust you. So, um, well, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't keep it Nate if we got a new person, new staff person. Right. So we need somebody nominated in, in, as a designee. Well, it could be from the commission though, too. Is all okay? All right. I'm just leaving it open. It could be always the chair, but it seemed more efficient to have it be the person who gets them and <clears throat> sees them first and then decides send them on or not. So God bless you. So if we designate Nate, the issue is just what, that when he leaves us, we'll need to designate someone again. Right. Right. So okay. That's good. I would say let's designate Nate now. <laughs> <laughs> and deal with that problem. Kick the can down the road. I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I won't be here. <laughs> no, Unless I think somebody wants fine. to volunteer, uh, you know, I mean, I, I was thinking uh, maybe Madeline uh, with her background might want to. I don't think I'm ready to volunteer for that, but I don't want to volunteer her. <laughs> it would up your load a little, Madeline, because you'd be having to look at all the applications that came in. Yeah, I don't think, I think I would be more comfortable having a staff member do that. Okay. We might at some point say that in consultation with you rather than the chair, for instance, if we wanted to, so that when that something came, he thought maybe should be mm -hmm. public hearing, he could just run it by you like he does me right now. But that's something later on you can decide if you want to, just because you have the expertise that many of us don't. Later sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Later for everything. Let me take a look at that. Okay. Okay. What else in the transition do we need to decide? Is there anything else, Ben? You want to um, just take a motion oh. and vote on that? Yeah. Oh yeah, let's vote on that. And then there is one other thing that that brings up. Um, and do so we need to? Did we need to vote on the letter for the recommendations for the projects? Um, it sounded like everyone was in support. I'm going yeah. to draft that. Yeah. Just curious. I don't think we need a motion or anything, but yeah. on this, I think we should have a motion. Yep. Okay. Uh, I, I so move that uh, we um, designate Nate. In lieu of Ben. Okay. 
Anybody want a second? Second. <laughs> okay, I think I should do a roll call vote on this. Uh -huh. so, Hetty Startup? Yes. At out? Yes. Madeline Helmer? Yes. Rebecca Lockwood? Yes. Robin Fordham? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, Nate, you are unanimously elected to this position. I hope you hold it in high regard and do your duty well. Yeah, I mean, we're anticipating one or two applications soon. Uh, well, you know, it could be a week, it could be a month, but sometimes applicants just kind of sit on it. So we've, you know, there's been a few questions and there's been some that have been kind of preliminarily submitted, but nothing formal yet. Okay, great. Um, okay, um, the other thing that brings up is that uh, we need members for this committee and um, or this commission and I send out a lot of letters, what, three months ago or something and turned up one person who was interested, um, who lives here but works in Mount Holyoke and nothing ever happened to that application. I'm not quite sure where in the process it died. Um, but other people, if you please could talk to those who might be interested in being on this, because they have to live in Amherst, which really narrows, you know, the number of people who are, who are interested in this kind of thing. Um, but we're going to need two people. Um, it's shrinking. So if you could help come up with names, rec and, you know, suggest people, it'd be really easy for them to apply. They just um, online, there's the civic engagement application or something. I forget what it's called. Um, and do we, have, do we have any connection with the UMass graduate program? I mean, any of their uh, historic preservation or architecture graduate students lived in Amherst? Yeah, I don't know you about the students. Can't... I contacted a lot of faculty. I don't know about students. Yeah. I mean, if somebody, yeah, uh, right. Get into the names of you know likely people if they live in Amherst, but I don't quite know mm -hmm. how I got that. Yeah. I did yeah. ask those I contacted if they knew anyone who might be likely. Right. And I only got a couple of answers back on that, but they nobody said oh, here are yeah, all yeah. Sometimes I think there's, yeah. there's other boards and committees that are having trouble finding yeah. volunteers, and so um, if you're if Jen, you know, if you know someone who submitted a form, it it, it would be on file, and so. When the commission, you know, the process is the town manager likes to hold um, short interviews with potential applicants for boards and committees. So 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes um, and then make a decision. And so, you know, they'll go back, you know, three years to see who submitted any, I call them CAFs. I don't know what they're called now, but, you know, any, whoever, and whoever submitted a form, they'll reach out to. Um, we're doing it for another committee I work with and they went back to 2019 or 18 and I said really we're going to go back to 2018 and they said well you know just to make sure I'm like okay but like that's four years ago um it's just that there's not you know for some boards and committees they, there's just not a lot of people submitting forms so well, Matt we did Madeline's interview with a bunch of others <coughs> for other committees at the same time and this one came in like that day and so it was a good time for that but I don't know what happened to it since because I just assumed and this and the secretary said it'll just be scheduled like in a week and it, nothing ever happened. So I don't know if Paul didn't like it or it got lost in the shuffle, but I thought maybe one of you might know where it is or what happened. Yeah. Sometimes they like to wait until there's like a critical mass of applicants before holding the interviews just so it can be a competitive, somewhat competitive yeah. thing. Um, but maybe this one did get lost in the shuffle. I didn't realize it came in like right after the interview process. Yeah. It's somebody who doesn't have as many qualifications as Malin, but is very interested, lives in Amherst, teaches at Mount Holyoke. Okay. Um, it just, you know, as a homeowner, it just seemed like mm -hmm. a likely person. Jan, could you check back with this person to see if they indeed did make an I application? Did. I did. And, and she was would a little willing to re she never got any response. Would she be willing to re reapply it, I don't just think to get it to the top? Yeah, she will. Well, no, but if it got file. lost, then well, then we'll find it. I mean, I, you know, she's already a little hurt that she didn't even get a response. So right. I, ask yeah, I don't. I don't. Um, yeah, I just did a quick email search. I didn't see that the town manager's office emailed about that, but maybe Ben, you would have it. Yeah, I think we could reach out to the town manager's office and ask staff for, for names and we could even just reach out. Um, I can reach out if 
you know, if they're not ready to start interviews, I could at least email, you know, the few applicants and tell them, you know, thanks for your patience. We're hoping to do something soon just so that they're kept up to date a little bit. I can email you her name so you know what to look for. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so anybody, you know, else you can think of, everybody, encourage folk. Um, do we have any public uh, waiting to comment? Nope. No one there. Yeah. Um, unanticipated items? Mm -hmm. Sorry, eating my flowers. No unanticipated items? Okay, great. Next meeting date. Do we we have one that is yeah. the December one coming up? Right. So, so, um, yeah. December seventh. Yeah. So right, ben, but that's not a regular meeting. meeting. Are you going to be at that meeting, Ben, so that we can fate you and raise a glass to you and stuff like that? Or you? I, gonna... I will not. Be there. You will not. Okay. Ben, you can come as a guest. We I can come can as a guest. To the watch, <laughs> watch the action. Yeah. yeah. But okay. is that our? That's not our regular meeting, right? Or did you just schedule it to deal with that issue early as our regular meeting? Yeah, I didn't think we had a regular meeting scheduled and there was this application that was um, partially submitted. So I wanted to uh, get something on the books for, and yes. then, yeah. Um, but this application is still kind of pending, but. Uh, okay, so that so, will be our meeting for December then. Yeah. Yeah, okay. well, the, ho the hope is that, you know, there's two pending demolition, I'll call them demolition applications. So they submitted building permits, but they haven't come through and submitted the application to the historical commission. And Ben's reached out to the applicants to say, you know, if you can get them in, you know, by the end of next week, we can have a hearing on December 7th. I see. So, um, otherwise, there won't, you know, they won't be ready and we'd have to then hold another hearing possibly in late December or early January, just to meet the time frame deadline. And well, so- Well, if that happens though, then we could cancel December 7th because we don't have that much else to do, right? We could, yeah. I mean, I, <clears throat> I just want to tell the applicants, um, I almost want to just say, you know, we're going to schedule it for January at this point. I just, one of them's out of the country evidently and the other one Ben's um, communicated with a few times and there's hasn't been any follow-up by them and so- it's just, it's odd. Um, I get it. We have to make sure the timing works, but it's, mm -hmm. uh, so we could say the seventh and then, um, you know, I will know in a week or so if, if we have any, if those proposals come in. Okay. Well, is everybody good with the seventh if we just hold, keep that as our regular meeting, whether those come in yeah. or not? I mean, if they don't, then we'll push them to January, but if they do, we'll have them then. Is that still a good date then for everyone? Yes. Yep. Okay. Great. Well, then that's our next meeting date. And the only thing left to do is to move to adjourn. I move to, that we adjourn. I second. Got it. Okay. We won't take a, a name re vote. We'll just do it by hands. So thank you, Ben. You've been a treat. Thank you. Good luck, you Ben. Good luck. Uh, and ben. you're welcome to come visit on the meeting at the meeting anytime. Okay. Um, well, the best to you always. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And Nate, looking forward to working with you again. Yep. Yeah, I have my historic picture of Town Hall up as my back. I know. You noticed. <laughs> You're really in the mood. You really got in the mood. I could tell. You <laughs> love you this committee. Are. You know you love this commission. You <laughs> always wanted to stay on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a, and, a quick, yeah. quick yeah. story is that uh, I got to go up into the uh, clock tower at Town Hall today. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, the, our facilities manager like, promised me I could go up there a few months ago. Now, it popped into my head today. I was like, oh, before my last day, I got to take them up on that. But it was <laughs> it was really cool. I mean, it's still the original, like all the gears and everything, and the bell is still there. And... Could you see out? Yeah, you could. Yeah, it's a great view up there, too. You like, could see the north <laughs> spire and the south spire. <laughs> what we talking yeah. about. But, yeah, yeah, and the facility, I, mean, I, I was up there years ago, but I guess it's it's really rough on the inside. They really haven't, yeah. um, you know, even the, the ladders or stairs and the woodwork, I don't think it's really been updated in, uh, I don't know, it's scary. Years. Yeah. <laughs> so it's still very much of the era it was built, unlike yes. the rest of the building. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, I've done yeah. that in buildings from the 10th century, so it can't wow. be that rough. <laughs> Good. Well, thanks Anywhere. everyone, and um, okay. again, December. Take care. Okay. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.